Hello ladies and gentlemen. Um, today I'm going to bring you a video on a modified Atwell machine on an inclined plane which I am going to do on my washing machine. So without further much ado, please copy down this problem and A, B, and C. These are the problems that I could ask you on an exam. Okay. Alright, so if you're finished copying down the problem, uh, I'm going to start off with the free body diagram. Now remember, free body diagrams do not have any virtual forces. So I'm only going to draw the quote unquote real forces. I'm going to start off with my force of tension holding up block 2 and the weight of block 2 going straight down. I'm going to do the weight of block 1 and the normal force of block 1. Remember, normal force should be 90 degrees with the surface. Uh, and last but not least, I'm going to draw the force of tension. Uh, pulling up block one. So that's my free body diagram for this scenario. Notice how I did not create any virtual forces. All right, now with that out of the way, let's create our net force equations in the x and the y axis. Okay. Now, I'm going to draw my x and y axis on this diagram here to further clarify the directions that I'm talking about. Now I highly suggest that you do the same uh, when you do your own problems so that you don't get confused. All right. So any arrow going in this up and left direction will be considered the Y and any arrows that are going to the up and right and down and left direction will be considered the X. Um, in order to create a net force equation what you need to do is actually include the virtual forces. Now Please do not include these virtual forces in a free body diagram. Okay, I suggest that you redraw the scenario, redraw all of your forces, and include the virtual forces in this new drawing. I'm just going to draw it over top here to save some time. All right, so this is 90 degrees, and this is my angle. And what we created here is a right triangle. Now, if we take a look at that angle, um, and we know that this is the 90 degree angle. We always know that opposite of the 90 degrees is our hypotenuse. Okay? And we're always going to be referring to this angle as theta. Let's take a look at this virtual side. This virtual side is opposite of theta. Now, if you remember, Sokotoa, opposite, we have to use sine of theta. Okay? Uh, and the equation always goes hypotenuse sine theta to find the opposite side. So we have m1g sine theta and that's equal to this virtual side. And what this virtual force is telling us is that the box will be accelerating down the ramp due to the force of gravity. Um, this virtual side right here is adjacent to theta and we know that for adjacent, so katoa, ka is cosine and the equation is always sine or hypotenuse times the cosine of theta. So here we have all our virtual forces. Now in order to create our net force equation we have to actually adjust the, um, the string so that the string goes in a straight line. So pause the video right here uh, and re draw this scenario so that the line, uh, the string is actually straight. And it'll look something like this. All right, welcome back. If your drawing looks like this, then congratulations, you um, drew the string so that it is along a straight line. And not only that, but you are wise enough to adjust the force of tension as well as the weight of mass two. Remember, the mass 2 used to be hanging down here, but what we did is we took all the forces and the mass and we readjusted it so that this object will be moving along straight line. Now, this is uh, a method that we can use to make our math a lot easier because before, when the mass was hanging down here, uh, the mass 2 would be dragging mass 1 up the ramp. Okay, assuming mass 1 was less than mass 2. So what that meant was that mass 2 will be moving 
down in this direction, and mass 1 will be sliding up that direction. So we have two directions of motion. However, if we use our imagination and we adjust mass 2 so that the line is straight, we can imagine that mass 2 is sliding that way, making mass 1 also slide in that same direction. Okay? So in reality, mass 2 is moving down and mass 1 is sliding up. But to make our math and our physics a lot easier, we adjusted mass 2 so that it's floating there, so that when it you know, when it's being pulled down by gravity, it's going to be moving in the same direction that mass 1 is sliding. Okay? So in order to write our net force equation, let me write that down here, we have to take a look at all of the forces along the x direction. So um, let's start from down here. We have this force, m1g sine theta, going to the left. We have force of tension going to the right, making that positive. Uh, negative force of tension going to the left, making that negative. Uh, and we have m2g going to the right, making it positive. Um, this, of course, assuming that anything going to the left is negative and anything going to the right is positive. Uh, if we were to clean this equation up, we have m1g sine theta plus m2g is are the forces along the x direction. And we would do the same process for the net force in the y direction. We have f of n going up, and I'm going to make anything going up positive. And then we have m1g cosine theta going down, and I'll make anything going down negative. So there we have it, our two net force equations. Now, question C asks for the acceleration of the system. Now, in order to determine which equation that we have to use to find the acceleration of the system, we have to look at how the object is accelerating. So when mass 2 moves down, it's going to accelerate mass 1 up the ramp, and that's along the x-axis. So I'm going to use my net force in the x-direction equation to determine my acceleration. So Newton's second law states that the sum of all the forces is the sum of all the masses in the system. So we have one, two masses times the acceleration is equal to the sum of all the forces along that axis. We're looking for acceleration. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide both sides by m1 plus m2, so we can get the variable that we're looking for to be alone. And if we do that, we have, oh boy, our acceleration. Of course, we in the x direction. Now, if you're wondering what the acceleration will be in the y direction, um, think about it. If object 1 jumps off the ramp or digs into the ramp, it will have the acceleration in the y-axis. However, it does not do either of those, so our acceleration in the y-direction is actually going to be 0 meters per second squared. Now, if you're confused because you're thinking, well, m2, which used to hang down like this, is going to be accelerating in the y-direction, okay, think about it. Remember, our y-direction is not straight down anymore. It's uh, along this axis. Uh, not only that, but we readjusted it so that M1 and M2 are going to be moving in one direction. So there is no acceleration along the Y axis. In a, any given problem, I could give you the values for either mass uh, and the angles so that you will get a numerical value for acceleration. Alright, thank you.